I was so pleased when you told me that story. Yeah. And then I said afterwards, why would you be more pleased that Elizabeth Taylor said something nice about you than Manny Mushkin? Yeah. Um, we have this preoccupation with celebrity. And that I was thrilled that Elizabeth, I didn't think yeah. she'd remember me. You said the same about Tennessee. That, yeah. That he had, well, Tennessee's... In Tennessee's a playwright. Tennessee's <laughs> well, Tennessee... Who I worked with on two shows. Uh, Slapstick Tragedy and Night of Iguana, right? Night of the Iguana and then Slapstick Tragedy. The, the first Tennessee was okay about. Slapstick Tragedy he was not happy about at all. That was an unpleasant experience. Either were the critics. Yes. <laughs> but he told me a story which you elaborated on when we met, that Tennessee was imbibing and taking certain chemicals on a regular basis by the time Slapstick Tragedy opened. And he bumped into you somewhere. And you started talking to him and asking how things were. And were you satisfied with this? And he was very pleasant, as Tennessee always was. People walked up to Tennessee and he was like, hello, talk to everybody. And finally, after you'd been talking for about 15 minutes, he looked at you and said, what's your name again? No, that that right? no the story. Oh, okay, see, we're all for clarification. Right? The real story? Okay. I was to go up to Tennessee's apartment with, he was to have an interview with the United Press, and I called him, I said, Mr. Williams, I will, uh, I'll be meeting you at one o'clock at your apartment. Ah, Mr. Rothenberg, I'm looking forward to it. He missed the best part, and I get a quiz after <laughs> uh, Who left? I thought it was fine. Who left? I want to know where, where <laughs> the fight was. Um, I said to I said, Mr. Williams, I'll be seeing you at 1 o'clock, and he said, I'm looking forward to it, Mr. Rottenberg. And I said, uh, by the way, I saw you Saturday night at that revival movie theater house down on Fifth Avenue, which doesn't exist anymore because there's television like TCM. And he said, uh, Oh, what those marvelous movies! It was Grand Hotel and um, what's the other one? They were Dinner at Eight. Oh. And he said, "Oh, didn't you love Marie Dressler?" And I said, "I had never seen her before." And he said, "Oh, I'd love to do a, a play with someone like Marie Dressler. She was marvelous." <laughs> and he said, "Well, why didn't you come over and say hello?" And I said, "Well, you were with people, Mr. Williams, and I. It was late at night, and I was going to see you on Monday morning." He said, "Well, that's very kind and thoughtful of you." And I said, "Well, fine. I'll be up there about one o'clock." And he said, "Fine, but can I ask you one question?" I said, surely, Mr. Williams. And he said, I know I know you, but from where? <laughs> <laughs> I, had I had been with him about, I should have preceded, to, I loused up the story. I had been with him about 70 or 80 times over the two shows that we had worked together. We had gone to parties together, dinner together, numerous interviews, and I would hope that I had had it. Yeah. But I was invisible. I had, uh, Kendra and Emma had not yet written into uh, Cellophane man. Mr. Uh, but, but he was always nice, unlike Joan Fontaine. And, 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 and you know, Tennessee had a line, whenever he felt he was getting high-handed with people, he'd say, look at me, acting like Faye Emerson or Joan Fontaine. <laughs> Those two names meant nothing to that room. <laughs> it's real life. Like, but, but, but I like, yeah. he came to see Fortune and Mentai, and he yeah. was thrilled with it. He came yeah. backstage and met the cast. He said, this is real theater. Yeah. That was the play that changed my life when I, it was a prison play that, uh, who hasn't read the book? Uh, <laughs> Fortune of Men's Eyes, a play I produced, which is takes, written by a man who had been incarcerated, and uh, it takes place in a prison cell with the actors I had gone to Rikers Island, and that was my introduction to prison. And from the, literally on the, the theater wasn't much bigger than this, from the after play discussions of, at the play, meeting men and women who had been incarcerated, we started the Fortune Society in my little theater office at 46 at Broadway, which is now the Marquis Marriott Hotel. It used to be a six-story building. If you want some Broadway folklore, mm -hmm. 46 in Broadway, and, and in that building, uh, we'll have a quiz. <laughs> Who's over 40? Kermit Bloom Garden, Kazan, Anta, Theater Arts, Magazine, uh, Bob Whitehead. We call them Bob, yeah. Robert Whitehead. Uh, they all had offices there, and, and the funny thing is, when the Fortune Society started in my little theater office, it was all formerly incarcerated people. We grew so big, we wanted to move out. We, nobody would take us because of who we were, yeah. but the people in the building that we were at at 1545 Broadway didn't want us to leave because it was the safest building in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> but I, were you working on hair? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I love that story you, you write about and have talked about. You, in this book. This book, right here, Fortune <laughs> in My Eyes. Um, that, like, you had all the posters of hair, and hair was the ticket everybody was trying to get. And here you were with all of these men. And I, I just love that story. Well, there's four of them. One of the, 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 the formerly incarcerated people had never 
been on radio and television because back at the, it was an invisible population back in the 60s because if you were known to have done time jobs, housing, everything, and but four of our guys went on the David Susskind program. We all know who David Susskind is. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Open end. I see. Yeah. Yeah. It always ended up seeing David Susskind's open end. I know. I would say it sounded like the colonoscopy. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> think about it. But anyway, David Susskind, <laughs> David Susskind was sort of like Oprah was. He'd have a program. I'm going to direct everything to you. Um, and four of our guys went on. And then and at the end of the program, uh, Susskind said, if you want to contact them, part of a new organization, Fortune Society, 1545 Broadway. And I'm in my little theater office with the hair posters, and I have about 250 men on the stairwell. Wanting, thinking we're a big, thriving organization. This was back in 68. Yeah. Where were you in 68? That's the question. Theoretically. <laughs> 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 your parents hadn't been it born yet. It depends on your moral system. Right? <laughs>